Hello everybody, hope you are all doing very well and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis after wow, what a massive day it was. <laughs> to be honest, obviously we had this really, really big pump. Um, you know, who's to say that it's over? Currently we're sat at uh, 7 o'clock exactly hope you're uh, on the 8th of February and honestly just wow. <clears throat> Uh, obviously, we were in this descending wedge, which you all know I was playing bearishly. So uh, <laughs> there, there, that obviously pumped up and played out as you would expect. Just general technical analysis uh, working has, as it should. Obviously, this was a is a uh, bear, bullish pattern. This uh, falling wedge is a bullish pattern. Um, and wow, it, it beat my targets for what I was expecting at the 618. Just to clear that out, firstly, it obviously smashed through top targets for me. Um, so that would that was a you know a really big volume pump of the day, uh, and you actually see the volume here. Okay, you have to remember that there's still what are we on seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You know about five hours left of the day, and we're already up above you know the highest volume for the last uh, how many days is this? Twenty nine days. We're going to be having our biggest spike in volume. So very noticeable, the biggest spike in volume of the month. Um, so yeah, I uh, hope you're all doing well. I'm just going to, before I actually properly start, I'm just going to wait for, uh, you know, people to f filter in here. Uh, um, yeah, basically, so we have about 100. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Uh, you see that my, my chat box is still not working. I am so confused on this chat box, why this chat box still doesn't work. Um, anyway, not to worry. The, the chat box here, though, I'm just going to hide it because I have no idea why it still doesn't work, to be honest. Uh, unless I do this, uh, chat box, no, no idea, I'm just going to hide it, okay, cool, and with that said, uh, yeah, I'm going to begin now, we have over 100, so, um, yeah, welcome everybody to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis, uh, obviously going to go through Bitcoin after the uh, very exciting day that it's had trading it, um, so as you all know that we were in this, you know, it's, it's obviously in hindsight now broken upwards, but this is a descending uh, falling wedge pattern. OK, so this falling wedge pattern in general technical analysis terms breaks upwards. OK, so it obviously followed the textbook and broke up. OK, went through my original targets of, you know, my top target. Uh, of this for this when it was you know if it broke up I was looking for around the 618 region and obviously we went smashing straight through that okay so today we've seen some massive massive numbers in terms of gains okay we had Litecoin with over 30% gains okay that's that's uh, absolutely massive obviously had a, a Ethereum falling down a little bit now but also currently sat on 13% gains you know that reached a top of $122 like really really big moves and I was in some altcoins uh, but most of the altcoins I, I was in saw about a 10% gain. So, you know, nothing, well, I mean, that's really still good 10%, but, you know, the main ones really uh, being Litecoin and um, and Ethereum with some really, really big moves, especially Litecoin. That's a crazy, crazy move upwards. Um, but yeah, what I want to go through in this video is um, going through, you know, what is going to be happening now on Bitcoin or in, from my opinion, what's going to be happening now on Bitcoin. Again, this video is not financial advice. Um, so please don't take anything I said as financial advice. And a really important thing to realize is that I am not a signal caller and I, I don't ever give signals. Um, so I'm more of, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, class myself as a teacher of technical analysis. So uh, none of my videos are signals or telling you to buy or sell. Um, really, this is all for education and, and just trying to learn so you can do this yourself. I'm not a signal caller. Um, so please don't get confused with that. Um, <laughs> just a good trader and l passionate about teaching technical analysis. Um, so with that cleared up, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. And yeah, let's go into it. So um, obviously, yeah, Bitcoin with a really big move. You know, where has Bitcoin stopped? And I'm going to blow you away. Uh, well, let me first cover before I blow you all away with where we've stopped, because it is, you know, textbook technical analysis where this is stopped again. So this is what I mean, like, Technical analysis, if you block out um, block out things that are going on in, in, you know, around you, then you just concentrate on this chart, okay? And I down fell by looking at this. I identified we were in a falling wedge, which breaks down, but I was still expecting a touch of the 200 weekly moving average, which we, we obviously never come down to touch the bottom of this wedge and the 200 weekly moving average, and we just broke straight up, okay? But, the you know, the textbook falling wedge was there. The textbook falling wedge was there, and we obviously... Um, I have broke up. So sorry, some people were saying they had sound issues, but I think that's okay. No, yeah, you can all hear me, okay? I believe. Um, I believe you can all hear me anyway. I hope so. Uh, sorry, some people were saying they couldn't hear me, but 
I'm going to carry on and if, if you can't hear me then just write lots of comments. Um, so yeah, what, what, what we were going to be going over is like where this has turned around currently. OK, but, you know, just concentrating on technical analysis itself, you know, you see this obviously falling wedge pattern, you know, where it bottomed out, obviously at the 786 Fibonacci, you have one touch of the 786 two, three touches today of the third third touch of that 786 Fibonacci level before obviously getting a really big pump and there's a few key areas for me where this has currently you know popped out my first upper side target was obviously this golden ratio um, pocket okay so the golden pocket was my first target uh, and you obviously know we we smashed straight through this target okay we went straight through that target okay so the short positions that I were in I got stopped out of my shorts on Bitcoin and I also got stopped out of shorts on Ethereum um, but I'm a trader that you know losses are part of trading and if you're not prepared to take losses then you shouldn't be in you know in trading it's not for you uh, if you're if you find yourself extremely emotional from taking a loss then trading I don't you know, well, I'm not saying trading isn't for you, but you need to learn to control those emotions. Um, I got stopped out on uh, Ethereum and I also got stopped out on Bitcoin uh, from shorter term plays I had. Obviously, my longer term shorts, I'm, I'm not worried about at all. Uh, but my shorter term positions, I got stopped out of shorts. But you you see, I, I literally don't care uh, and I get stopped out of positions. But I then, um, you know, I have that doesn't affect me emotionally and I'm just on to the next trade straight away. If I get stopped out of a short, whenever I get stopped out of a position, I know that that it's because the move has gone against me that stop loss is there to protect you okay no trader in the world is going to win 100% of their trades and this is not technical analysis now this is just me talking from the heart because I see so many people that were really emotional after what's happened today and so this is just general advice um or you know not find you know not fish, but general tips in in terms of trading that if you find yourself emotional after taking losses then you need to step back and move away from trading for a few days because that is not what you are aiming for as a trader okay so try and use me as sort of you know guidance you know I've been through this I've been trading many many years now so take this as you will um I think that my my uh advice is is useful because I've went through these stages um so I really hope that this can help you if you find yourself like this but you know I was in short positions today and I got stopped out of short positions but you see I have zero you know I'm free I'm happy I, I don't mind because I get stopped out of a position if I get stopped out of, posi of a position I'm grateful for my stop loss okay I'm grateful for that stop loss because it protected me and it minimized my risk uh not only that that if I get stopped out of a position, I know that the move is going against me. And that gives me opportunities, obviously, to look for long positions. OK, and that's where my if I get stopped out of a position, I know one, there's great volatility. So that's where I go into sculpting mode <laughs> and can just sculpt this for hours on end. Uh, and two, you know, I've just realized that, yeah, I've been out of that position. I'm now on to my next position. OK, so, you know, that was just something that I needed to touch on first because I had a lot of people like really emotional, uh, like sending messages um, and it's not a good thing to, you know, one, I don't I can't be done with the negative energy of people trying to, uh, you know, just be negative. That's that's not for me. And that's not what I'm about. I'm all about positivity. And, you know, you know moving forwards that if, you, if you're negative then i'm not interested really in responding to you uh, and secondly you know it's part of trading you really need to control those emotions and that's just something that i personally needed to just get off of my chest before i continued with this technical analysis um you know yeah that, that that's that's the most i'm going to do with it because as you all know i'm a positive happy guy and when i see you know streams of emotional people that have taken losses you know it's it's not good um, and you, you, yeah, basically if you, if you, but the, the fix for that is, you know, really studying hard, really, you know, studying, not just charting and not just, as you all know, this is a, a, a thing that I preach that, that seven, I've, I've, I've done these sort of stat cave before. I believe that 60% of trading is, is the psychological trader. Okay. To be a successful trader, 60% of the, of the DNA of a successful trader is somebody who can manage their emotions and manage their psychology. Okay. The psychology obviously includes some emotions. That's 70, 60, 70% of a trade of successful trader. Then the next 20%, uh, is going to be your risk management and the last 10% is your technicals. Um, so that just goes to show that the uh, honestly, I can't really say explain it enough, but emotional emotions and psychology in general are going to be what determines if you are successful or not at the end of the day. OK, and then it's risk management and then it's technicals. I mean, everybody saw this falling wedge pattern. 
Um, but it was the technicals and the greed, you know, and this is something that I, I've noticed, you know, I, I was a bit too greedy here on some of my positions, wanting a 200 exponential moving up average touch, but it was textbook falling wedge. This was going to break up. OK, you know, just general textbook an analysis. And this is something that, you know, I can admit when I'm wrong. OK, I admit that I was wrong by, well, you know, I'm not going to say I was wrong because I'm going to go through what I believe is happening. But, you know, me getting a little bit too greedy here cost me a few percent on a, on a short position. But again, I'm, I'm really not bothered by that. Um, so, yeah, with that said, <laughs> sorry, I just wanted to get some things off my chest. So, um, yeah, now we're now we're done with that. We can close close that chapter and move on to. Uh, yeah, we're going to be we're going to be keeping this positive and we're going to be going over what has happened here on Bitcoin, because I believe that, you know, this is a a good move in terms of this pump up okay it's very healthy for the space in general okay lots of volume has come back into this space this is exactly what we wanted okay so really this is a very good day for crypto in general okay but i'm going to hopefully blow some of your minds where where this move stopped if i said to you right now why has this move stopped here okay and let me tell you something that every single chart okay um <laughs> um yeah that every single chart Every single price stops at a specific place for a reason. Every single candle you see here has stopped at a specific reason for a, for you know, for a, the, there's something on that chart that has, you know, made that stop at that place. Okay. Nothing at all on a chart is random. Okay. And that's the first thing to understand that nothing at all is ever a random place. Okay. And when you start to realize that, that nothing on this chart is random, that nothing is manipulation and it's all to do with technicals and what's happening here, you can start to work out for yourself, why has this move stopped here? And if you can answer this right now, then bravo. Um, I believe that this move has stopped here for a variety of reasons. Obviously, we had this uptrend here, okay? And obviously, we've wicked slightly above this one, okay? So this is where we obviously moved down, had a spike up, and then have got, had, had, had downwards movement, okay? And that upward spike was 3,718. Would have that been a target for me? No, that this horizontal here would not have been a target for me, 3,718. But what would have been a target, uh, which I've highlighted, you know, several times, is the trend line horizontal, uh, is the trend line downward sloping resistance, okay? And this is what I hope can blow your minds because of where we have stopped here. It's no, literally no random reason. We all know that we were looking at this descending triangle, okay? And I hope that this can blow you away right now of where we have stopped. We have stopped literally literally to the dollar okay this is not you know random this is not random we have stopped to the dollar of this descending triangle line okay just absolutely look at this and just be amazed this was the place that you know we have been highlighting we have been talking about for several weeks now the possibility of being in a symmetrical or descending triangle and we stopped at the absolute line okay that is not random not random at all. Um, so when you look at that line where we've stopped here, and the, just to show, show, show you how I've drawn this trend line, it's taken it from the upwards, you know, the where we obviously move down and we come down to 3,600. We then bounced up to 4,400. And you'll know that horizontally, this is the line for me to get interested in really long-term bullish or, or long positions up to around 5,000. So we take it from 4,400 and we combine that down then just using our ray to the high on the 24th of December at 4,200, okay? And then that automatically expands on. So you use the ray tool, OK, you use that ray, you click once on the top at the, at the 29th of November, click again at the high of the 24th of December. OK, and then you see it just automatically will have that line going door going on from, you know, to the end of time. And what do we see here? I just, you know, it's it's amazing. And this is why technical analysis is absolutely great. We stopped to the dollar. OK, at this point in time. OK, and this is a trend line that everybody should have on their chart and not remove. OK, I, I am drawing and removing trend lines on this trading view account. I've said it before. I have my own personal trading view account and I have a public trading view account on this one. I'm always removing and you know adding things on to post onto Twitter and, and Discord, etc. But my own trading view accounts, I would never, ever remove a trend line once it's been validated. OK, because trend lines, once they've been drew once and they're validated, then they will come back in the future again. OK, so this trend Trend line again in like one year's time could come into play again. Okay, this is a valid, really valid trend line that is now established. Okay, so you would never want to remove this from your chart. Okay, or I personally, on my accounts, I would never remove a valid trend line from a chart because at some point it's going to come back and, and be used again. Okay, 
Um, so what you can do if you don't want it, you know, on your chart so much, you can like make it really small and make it some sort of, you know, little dotted pattern. And that's not really going to be, you know, bringing your eye or attention to it. But, you know, it's, you're going to want to keep it on your chart in the future. OK, so I'm going to just make it thick again because obviously that's what we're looking at right now. Um, but yeah, that, that's a such a valid trend line. And, you know, when we were going through this, uh, you know, uh, previously, I think it was maybe... Um, I can't remember, this was like a few weeks ago, but I'm just gonna remove this one trend line. And when we were drawing this trend line from the bottom on the sixth of on, on the sixth, okay, on the sixth, we were extending this trend line like this. And this is the other descending triangle trend line that we were looking at. Now from the sixth of February bottom, you know, extending it down and down and down and down. And obviously we haven't reached um that high at the moment, but that's another descending triangle that we can keep our eye on trend line. Um but for me, this is the most valid one that we obviously have got stopped at currently, okay? And this gives, oh, excuse me, I'm just gonna take a drink really quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, um, so yeah, what I wanted to point out here, uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I have a treadmill and, uh, and I, got, I got off my treadmill. If, if I, I'm not sure, it probably doesn't look like I'm too out of breath, but I was on it um, and it's, yeah, a little bit out of breath, but not, not too bad, so it's all right, I'm gonna continue. <laughs> um, yeah, but what we were looking at here, obviously, you know, this is the first trend line that you want to be taking note of. OK, from here, you know, that, that that's where you can now have a really clear point of view that if we break this trend line, then there's obviously a clear bullish, you know, momentum. But currently, as it stands, there's no reason to be FOMOing into any sort of positions. Uh, for, well, for me anyway, you know, I, I wouldn't say there's any needs because, you know, you have just got rejected at a trend line. OK, and now we go back into the possibility of seeing this sort of either. There's a few options, isn't there, that we're, this is going to be a descending triangle we're going to break down or we are forming this symmetrical triangle. And I'm going to use the Ray tool again because, you know, that's what we should be using here. Um, you, you know, this Ray tool again, see a small wick through, but, you know, that that's fine for me. I allow wicks. And now what we have here are some really important trend lines. Obviously, this falling wedge is now broken. Um, what, what we can do is start to get where an official target would be on that wedge. Um you know, that official, you know, you can more say, let's say that that was a textbook break. OK, um, to be honest, this was an absolute textbook break. And more or less, we're talking about within, you know, how much of that target did it reach within one less than one percent of that target it reached. OK, so this really has is the uh, was the target being reached of a falling wedge. OK, for that falling wedge pattern, or how I take my falling wedge patterns. OK, maybe some other traders will different, but I take it from where that falling wedge started to the top to the where that top of that falling edge trend line. So where the two trend lines were basically from where that trend line started to where it ended. You you know, you take that trend line you or you take that percentage range like that and then you move it to where that broke out what breakout was. And you can just see, you know, really textbook. It's obviously reached its target very well, in, in my opinion, not just that that it reached its textbook sort of you know basically from the book uh where it would break up to but also hitting this trend line for me is like you know just adding to the resistance of where that's come up to okay um so yeah that was an that was an interesting place to go and uh, obviously i got stopped out uh as you all know uh it's just i don't want people to think that i don't lose positions because you know I, I i've lost a position today when i was in that short but as you all know, I, I don't mind losing positions and it's part of trading. And again, if, if you follow someone that never loses, then, they, then they're lying to you and you should probably unfollow them. Um, but yeah, what I'm going through here is obviously I got stopped out of this trade when we went to the 618. But for me, instead of looking for shorts, I was looking, you know, just entering into new shorts. I obviously got stopped out of this one because then for me, that move was invalidated and I want to do a new position. OK, obviously, I could have kept my short open to here. But for me, I prefer to get stopped out and enter a new position. Uh, a little bit difficult to... Um, sometimes with like BitMEX overload and, and this is where you have to be careful what exchange you're trading on. OK. Um, obviously, you have to be careful with BitMEX with that overloading issue. But for me, I knew this trend line was here. And, you know, for me, I'm, I'm got stopped out of one position, but I'm in another, <laughs> be it short. I was still going into new short positions, you know, knowing that this was here. Okay, so the way that I traded this is first, you know, making new orders for a, a short position. And then on another exchange, I'm scalping it. OK, so I'm, you know, this is why I tra trade off of, you know, several different exchanges. If you didn't know, you know, I'm I'm somebody that has lots of different exchange accounts. And that this is the reason because I can be doing lots of things on different exchanges. On one exchange, I can be going long. On one exchange, I could be going short, for example. One exchange, I can be swinging. One position, I can be uh, scalping. OK, so that's why you trade on lots of exchanges. 
uh, or why I do anyway. Um, maybe that's not necessary for so many people. If you're not like a full time trader, if you're just doing this part time, then you probably don't need so many exchanges like I'm on. But um, you know, that's why I'm doing that. So obviously, I got stopped out of the short at the six one eight. I'm grateful for being stopped out of here because obviously there was another you know big percentage move up here. But then what I was looking at is on this trend line, I was laddering in from the trend line up to the three eight two. Okay, we never reached this three eight two, so obviously I didn't get all of my short positions filled. But I was just under the you know expecting that maybe we see a, a small wick above the trend line okay so I had one short position filled and that was on the trend line and I was laddering, planning to ladder up again up to the 382. So this would have been the positions that I was looking for more shorts. Okay. In the end, I obviously just took one short position here because, you know, the move didn't come up and fill anymore. Okay. And that's what would be my, you know, that's what I class as a swing position because I'm happy to hold this all the way back down to this bottom trend line. Okay. Uh, and again, if, if this move is to come up, and break through then guess what i get stopped out of another position <laughs> um, but i'm you know always looking for more trades and you know it doesn't affect me personally at all uh, it's part of trading um, but yeah, that's my plan basically now. So I'm in a a swing short swing short position, and my target is down to this six one eight region again. I'm going to see you know how this plays out over the weekend. If we can come down, and if we hold this as support the six one eight, then that for me is really bullish. Okay, that for me is my first short target, and that's well actually that's not my first short target. I'm going to go over more targets I have, but this is my target <laughs> for the short position the the six one eight. Okay. Uh, I'm going to see if that now acts as support again and we get a movement up. Okay, so that's the, the first thing I'm looking at here. The second thing that I'm looking at here is obviously, you all know, I'm a big Fibonacci fan. So we want to zoom down here onto the four hour. Oh, no. So before I move on to the four hour, I want to show you another thing of where we where we stopped out here and where I was also looking for shorts. So the, here we're on the daily chart. And I want to show you all the 55 exponential moving average. And as you all know, the 55 e exponential moving average for me is always a really big, you know, resistance. And again, here's the 55 exponential moving average and we stopped, we literally stopped within 0.2%, 0.2% we stopped within it. So that's for me a rejection from the 55 EMA, okay, 0.2%. Um, just again, technicals working brilliantly, just really the 55 EMA, you know, this is where you can just be really confident in entering, you know, shorts or why I am. When I see like top trend lines that has been, you know, started way back on the 29th of November, almost, you know, two, three months, you know, you've been going on a long time. And then you start to see the 55 EMA. And let me just show you this. This is the first time it's been touched, um, you know, from back on the 7th of November since our drop. This is always going to reject the first time. The 55 EMA is such a strong EMA. It's well, obviously nothing's guaranteed in trading, uh, so I can't say always, but I would say 95% of the time you're going to reject off of this the first time you, you touch it, okay? Um, so that's another thing that I wanted to cover on the daily chart here, that we obviously stopped at the daily 55 exponential moving average, not random at all, okay? Not random. Um, <laughs> so yeah, now we go down to the four hour. Uh, and now what we see here on the four hour is we can start to take some new Fibonacci levels of of, of, of more places where I'm just looking for, for here scalping positions. I scope off of these EMAs. I'm not using this for swing positions, okay? If we just drop down to the 15 minute, you can just see how it's already played out, okay? And this is where I, you know, I played this down to here. And on my swing scope positions, because, you know, I have different capital for different trades okay i have you know a, a certain amount of capital put towards swing trading and a certain amount of capital put towards scalping okay so that's how i work as well um not one lump sum it's all split up uh, and you know it's just way that i manage my trades and then what you saw here was obviously you know entering entering shorts here on uh, for a scope position and you scope it down to the um you basically enter your shorts and you scope it down to the the, the fibonacci levels so this is how i do it in combination with exponential moving averages so i use quite a variety when i'm scoping but that's the general gist you want to use exponential moving averages the bollinger band and also the all fibonacci's and occasionally you can do Elliott wave counts in here if you want. Um, but yeah, I wasn't trading this off of an Elliott wave count. Uh, but you can also do Elliott wave counts in here of counting five waves and then and then closing a position and going into the ABC. Um, but that's not what I've been doing recently. I've not really been trading too much from Elliott waves. Okay, but you see here now what we what we're doing is we want to load up our volume. Okay, load up our volume, and you see obviously we're on decreasing more or less bare volume. I, you know, a bit a bit of both, but we're either way we're on decreasing volume, um, which can be seen quite bullish. Obviously, we're co consolidating, which seems to be you know forming some sort of triangle here. 
Okay, you see how, you know, that's pretty, you know, we could see a break. I'll, I'll be doing this video likely for more than 15 minutes. So we'll see if this happens. But this is actually um, quite bullish. Okay, we're we're consolidating on the 236, on the 23, ah, trading view. <laughs> uh, you, we're obviously consolidating on the 236 in a, in a symmetrical triangle, which could potentially lead to more upwards. You know, we're getting no bearish signs at the moment. Okay, this is... Uh, you know, it could just move sideways. You know, there's the potential that we obviously just move sideways. And then, you know, there's no denying that. But as it stands at the moment, you know, it, it, that this is for me looking quite, you know, a bullishly, you know, if I had to pick a side, it would be, um, you know, bullish consolidation here. We're obviously just seeing declining volume on a Fibonacci level. Um, you know, that's looking quite healthy. And now our exponential moving averages are going to start catching up and acting as support too. So on a short term time frame, this is, you know, looking quite healthy for the bulls. But again, this is where I'm, you know, where you have to, you know, zoom out. Although that consolidation is looking nice on that short term sort of time frame, when we zoom out, we know that we are still faced with this big resistance trend line. OK, and, uh, you know, above like the, you know, the, the EMAs on the daily. Um, but, you know, short term, you know, that was a nice pump for the bulls. But you have to question yourself and really think about, you know, I, I'm, I'm not um, giving any answers. I'm just trying to, you know, make your brain active so you can think through this yourself. Um, uh, like I say, I'm not a, a signal giver. Um, but what we are, what you have to try and think is, OK, was this a pump, a final, you know, shakeout? I'm sure so many people FOMO'd in and this is increasing with the volume. That is this some, was this um, one final fake out before we hit our top descending, you know, trend line again before we move back down? OK, obviously, there's no way to know that at all yet. We need to wait for more data. Um, but there's obviously that possibility. This was a fake out before we move back down. OK, that's what I've got in my mind anyway. But yeah, should we break up? Um, you know, should we break and close above this resistance trend line? Then that is obviously not going to be happening short term. OK, that would be for me be out of the question short term. And I would expect, you know, testing up to you know 4200 uh 4000 you know just 4000 psychological moving up to 4200 where we obviously have our resistance next one and then obviously the top being 4440 that's where you would start to be looking short term okay because obviously this has been a really high volume move okay you can't discount the volume that's come in here you know really high volume that we've seen come in um, you know, consolidation not you know although we've seen a, a little bit of an upper top of wick there's no need you know for me, it's 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 short term looking after breaking up here. Well, I'm kind of in a, like an undecided place. And this is why you have to try and, you know, we need to wait for more data. You know, as it stands right now, there's bullish and bearish arguments. OK, we have obviously the bearish arguments for me. I'll give my bearish arguments first. We have obviously just textbook broken. You know, this pump has come from this descending wedge. OK, so that's the reason of the pump, in my opinion, that we obviously you know, broke up from this descending wedge. As you all know, this descending wedge target has more or less been hit. OK, more or less it's been hit with the potential of moving up to the 382. And as you all know, that this is where, again, I've got, you know, shorts placed. Should we get this extra move up onto around 3,800, then I'll still be in, you know, looking for shorts up to 3,800. So the bearish argument is that, yes, we've just hit a target now of the descending wedge. OK, not just that, but we've foot stopped again at our you know, downward sloping trend line. OK, that's another bearish argument that this is just textbook come up to this trend line again before we head back down. OK, so for me, there are two really bearish arguments. OK, we've obviously just again on, on more of a longer term macro perspective. Um, you know, we just zoom this up to the weekly for, for a minute. And for a macro sort of term, look at this. I'm just going to hide. Um, obviously, let me just hide the volume. I hope this is all helpful for you. Um, because obviously, yeah, I hope this is, this is helpful for you all. But obviously, we just see lower high, 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 and this is just another lower high on the macro, you know, macro sort of term. You know, there's there's nothing to be shouting about here. It's just another lower high on the chart. Um, so you really cannot be um, expecting something. You know, you know, there's no reason to be looking, you know, overly bullish here. And and that's why my that's the way i'm trading that's the way um you, you have to you know like i posted earlier on twitter um where was it um i post things and then i forget what i post to be honest um 
Anyway, I can't remember where I posted, but it was basically a post saying like, make, you know, look at the perspective of what's going on here. You know, people are going to obviously get carried away. And that's obviously we've seen coins with 30% moves up. And, that, you know, that's absolutely amazing. I'm going to go through Litecoin in a minute of that head and shoulders because that was a game textbook. But uh, um, yeah, that, that, that we obviously when you see 30% moves up, you know, yeah, FOMO can 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 play out because obviously if you'd FOMO'd in when it saw its 10% gain this morning, you're now 20% up. At the end of the day, if we zoom out and look at the perspective of what's going on here, we are just forming another lower high. OK, and that's not changed for me until we break up from here, which is four thousand two hundred, you know, four thousand two hundred. Then that would be an, that would be our new higher low formed. OK. So 4,200 for me is still the overall big resistance. Okay, 4,200, really, really big resistance. Uh, moving up to 4,400. And if we break up from here, obviously we've now formed a, a lower high, lower high, but there is the potential that we form a, a higher low here. Okay, and then we're going to be forming into some sort of symmetrical triangle. And then we'll see how that symmetrical triangle breaks. OK, so for me, like it all, requ it all requires perspective and just, you know, this for me is like, because I've been, you know, I've been trading eight years in total. Um, so I've been trading, you know, I think that's quite a long time, especially for my age. You know, I've been trading a long time. And this is for me just like really textbook, really nothing out of the ordinary. Obviously, this happens in stock markets all the time. But on crypto, it's amplified where you see these sort of pa patterns on the stock market. And maybe you get like a 5% a move or something, you know, just for an example. But maybe you get a 5% move and then it happens on cryptocurrency and you see 30% move, something that you generally don't see on a stock market move 30% in one day. But like everything's amplified. But, you know, for me, I, I have so much experience and looking at this that there's I don't ever find myself get carried away or like FOMOing or, you know, not knowing what to do. OK, uh, you know, I had a plan. Uh, you know, I was ready for any move that happened. You you know, I've, I've you know, I may, you know, I went through my plans in, in, in videos earlier in the week. And obviously my plan was originally, um, you know, I'm pretty sure I even posted it here on the on my ideas. You know, my idea, you know, this is something that can't be edited and we're going to go through what's happened. Um, obviously, I posted this falling wedge and this was posted on the 5th of February. So three days ago. OK, three days ago. As you all know, this was what I this is what you know, you can go in here and read it. But Obviously, we were looking at here a breakdown of what I thought would happen. OK, I thought we would break down, touch this lower level um, and then get a potential bounce off of this 200 weekly moving average. But as you can see here, these sort of lines show you that I was aware that we could be breaking up. OK, otherwise I obviously wouldn't put them here. Um, and then if we press play and this was when, you know, this is I can't edit here. We press play. What happens? You know, we moved down. We did get very close. <laughs> I mean, this can't be made up. This is, you know, uneditable. And then we obviously come down hit very close to that target i got a little bit greedy here i'll be honest with you a <laughs> um, little bit too greedy and that's you know something that I, I you know obviously need to work on i do get a little bit too greedy with position sometimes and i'm aware of that um but yeah you know this is where you know i drew out the target for you all i i put it on the chart and people were saying that i haven't you know made it obvious of what to do and i think this is you know how all more obvious could i make it that you know the, here was the target for me you shouldn't be listening to me anyway I, I don't think you should be learning it yourself but you know this was the target of 15 percent. that's where you'd be aiming for 15 percent. we obviously moved up a very high percentage got very close to this target um you know and there was the potential of the move up we obviously went straight through the 618 where it was my first target but we stopped out more or less on this um, sloping trend line okay so you know that was there there for you all to see um but yeah what a move it really was um and that was that's what i wanted to cover for bitcoin i'm just going to take a drink really quickly ah god sorry everybody uh, <laughs> um Cool. So I hope you enjoyed that Bitcoin. And now I'm going to go over Litecoin and why this broke up today. Um, because again, this this was a um, uh, actually I want the, the the chart that I was posted out today. So I posted this in my Discord. Um, when did this chart actually loads? You see how slow my trading view is going. Um, so what we see here, it might already be yeah. So it's already drew on. But you know, this is what we will. You know, this is why Litecoin itself has drew. You know, exploded here. That we obviously had this head and shoulders pattern. Okay, so we formed the left shoulder here. We formed the right shoulder here, and then sorry, what am I on? We formed the left shoulder here. We then formed the head, and then we formed this right shoulder, and then obviously that has caused a really big breakout. This target has not been reached yet. Okay, and this is on the BTC pairing. We look at a target here from the bottom of the head, and we draw it up, and then we move this over to the breakout. 
account. And you see this target actually sits uh, at a 0.012, okay? And in terms of percentage, that's around another 5% away. Um, but, you know, this is obviously a hit again. As we all know, nothing stops for a reason. You know, everything stops, sorry, everything stops for a reason. And you see that we have more or less stopped at around, you know, if you, this is on the daily chart, if you zoom into a four hour, you're, you're, we're going to see, you know, places. But, you know, when you look at this close here and then we get a bounce and then we get a support touch. So you can see this is a confirmed um, resistance line that we'd be looking at where we see support, support, support and support. We move that along. Where did we broke out? You know, we broke up and got stopped at this first resistance line where we can be calling this cluster here, you know, quite heavy resistance here, really. OK, and that's why we haven't reached the top target as of yet. But that's why Litecoin, in my opinion, why Litecoin had such a big breakout that a lot of people obviously watching this head and shoulders. A lot of people have stop losses placed just above that head and shoulders. All it requires is that spike in volume and you then get a lot of stops taken out and, a, you know, the movement carries on. Just look at that volume. OK, this is what you want to see when you're trading a head and shoulders or any pattern in general you want to see volume confirmation okay and this is what you call volume confirmation obviously and um, when it was breaking out this was something i was watching um the volume was coming in you know in droves as soon as it broke out so this is a position that you could be very confident in buying okay you can be very confident buying into that market position upon the breakout of that neckline uh, when there's so much volume coming in, you can be extremely confident in buying. Uh, and obviously, yeah, that 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 moved up, th you know, th you know, thirty percent on the day. Um, but if you were buying from this right shoulder, then you've obviously got even more profits. But, you know, there was a really nice example, again, of just technical analysis in general working of a left shoulder, a head and a right shoulder breaking up with volume. OK, um, so, yeah, that's that's what happened on Litecoin. Just absolutely you know crazy <laughs> you know this was a tweet that i po posted the other day no literally yesterday literally yesterday this is what i tweeted out i said if bitcoin behaves like nicely for the next few days and this was literally yesterday um then i can th then alts can have a nice breather and what happened bitcoin behaved nicely and alts have had more than a nice breather actually they had a very nice breather and every altcoin that i posted that i was entering uh risky entries i i was aware they were risky entries but i was comfortable for the potential reward here okay and like like I replied here, like, you know, tight stop losses is worth an entry, even though I remain bearish overall. You all know I was still bearish overall. <laughs> um, but even though I was bearish on Bitcoin, I still saw the potential on these altcoins. So this is Icon, Ontology, XLM, Zill and VeChain. Every single one saw a 10% move today. And and this is also why I'm not unaffected by taking losses on Bitcoin, because obviously, you know, I took a loss on Bitcoin and I took a loss on Ethereum. But all those losses were made up for me anyway by the altcoins I was in. But, you know, that was, you know, that was just like entering yesterday. Like you can just you just sometimes just have to work out the risk rewards. And if you can enter in positions with a tight stop loss, like I replied here that, you know, with a tight stop loss, it's worth an entry. And if you can find those risk to reward ratio trades where you've got a nice entry with a tight stop loss, then it's worth the trade. Or and for me, it is anyway. I'm all about risk to reward ratios. You all know how much I harp on about <laughs> how much I harp on about risk management for me it's really important and when you get a good risk to reward ratio trade like that uh like you could see on these altcoins icon was not so much icon had obviously already seen a big pump on the day uh but in terms of um tether value obviously that's moved up today and and um so that was uh one that was a little bit late but obviously it's still seeing moves up on the day but the rest of these are obviously you know have, have seen great moves today uh, and those were just to pick a handful that I posted about here and just saying that there's five that I'm managing closely. And, you know, these were the five and they've all saw, you know, they all saw those moves up. So there were definitely signs that we would be seeing a big move up if Bitcoin behaved nicely. Uh, but Bitcoin actually actually behaved more than nicely, uh, gave us a pump straight through the 618. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that just amplified the returns on those altcoins. Um, but that just goes to show, you know, a, a lot of people, as you all know, were feeling very... Um, People were very, uh, what's the word? People were feeling very, um, I'm, I'm, I'm losing the words now. People were very bored by what was going on um, over the last few days. But, you know, I'm never bored when there's sideways movements because there's always something happening for a reason. 
Uh, I'm just going to remove some of these charts off now. Um, and, you know, everything was, you know, when we were moving sideways, a lot of people were bored. And I'm just like, yeah, you shouldn't be bored when you're trading. You should be using this time to look for setups. And that's what I'm doing every single time. I'm never bored. Uh, and I, I enjoy sideways periods because it gives you time to really study the charts and work out what's going on. Sideways movements, people get bored by. And just in general, uh, people get bored by sideways movements. But sideways, you know, when you're moving sideways, that shouldn't be looked at as boring. That should be looked at as accumulating or distribution okay sideways movements are one of the two and obviously this was accumulation so we had a whole week of accumulation here for a big pump okay so you have to work out what's going on here why are we moving sideways uh, obviously it's it's not always obvious that you know when when something's moving sideways you need to be realizing that it's happening for a reason we're moving sideways here because obviously big players are wanting to accumulate at this point for a pump okay and that's why it happened um so uh, you know this was on icon uh, icon i i um icon obviously that we're looking at here right now but obviously icon had seen a week of accumulation and then a nice pump and obviously icon was at a stage where it hit like a really really important support okay and, you know, I'm, I'm, this is one of the coins that I'm really bullish on long term. I'm, I'm a big fan of Icon. OK, I'm a big fan of Icon. And even if it was to get up to all time highs, that's a 1500 percent gain. Long term, I'm bullish on Icon. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but um, yeah, it's a coin that I like fundamentally. But um, yeah, so this is a coin that I'm always watching. But this was interesting that it came down. Obviously, 550 sats is where it first got released on Binance, okay? So that's where I'm getting this from. First release there, obviously came down, you know, at this point when we first moved off, there was the potential that we could take off, you know, not hitting it. But then what happened is we came down and then we've hovered around that support level, okay? We hovered around that support level, saw a week of accumulation before a big pump yesterday, okay? Uh, here, Icon was leading the way, and then everything else followed today. Well, obviously, Icon has stayed more or less the same, um, but obviously, the, the rest of the space took off today. Um, so that was nice. But again, um, th th there was definitely opportunity in these coins. OK, and I'm just noticed something that's just OK. No, that wasn't anything here. I just was, you know, sometimes I just see things and think, oh, um, you know, here we might have seen potential trend line. Yeah. So like this is a sort of trend line that you should be taking a note of where you see like a trend line resistance where we had saw here resistance, uh, resistance, 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 resistance. Like a, this is a really valid trend line for me. OK, when you see a trend line like this and you see such a strong downward sloping resistance like this. OK, this is icon. Um, you see such a sloping trend line resistance like this, then that's like wow, that's really respected. And when you break over this, if you break over this with volume, then that's your signal to be entering in positions. And I'm just going to show you all how good the volume was on Icon. Yeah, basically, you see this, you see this volume? <laughs> um, volume doesn't lie. And, you know, when you see like breaks of, you know, obviously we're going to, we'd have to zoom in on a lower time frame to see when this break happens. I'm just going to do it to show you all. Um, but when you see this spike in volume here, you see this is where we spiked in volume. So you spike in volume. This is obviously a really, really, really massive spike in volume. Just look at this, you know, before it happened. This is what you'd have seen. You'd have saw the, the neckline break. You'd have saw this resistance line breaking with this volume. This is like buy. <laughs> this is telling you buy me. <laughs> this is like the big, biggest sign you can see of something trying to say buy me. This is happening. You break up from a really big resistance trend line. That had been going on since the 10th of January. OK, so that's nearly one month. OK, we had been in this for exactly 27 days. This trend line had been holding us down. You break a resistance trend line like that that's been going on for nearly a month with that volume. Then I'm sorry, but if if you you know, this is why you need to learn technical analysis. This is just like telling you buy me. <laughs> um and then, like, once you've broken up from there, what's happened? Well, I mean, even if you broke, just bought on this break, then you would have still seen, you know, there was still 17% more of that move to come. OK, so, yes, if you had been accumulating at the bottom, you make 26%. If you wait for confirmation, you still made, like, say, let's just say 15%. OK, um, you know, opportunity is there every single day on every single coin. Um, and I'm a big fan of cryptocurrency. Uh, it's funny. Yesterday I met up with some stock, uh, some old uh, friends that trade forex in the stock market, um, and I was telling them the reason that I don't trade. You know why I moved across to cryptocurrency is because for me, cryptocurrency is the future. <laughs> uh, I see cryptocurrency really healthy long term. Uh, there's no reason to worry. The more it drops, the you know, the, you know, more accumulation you can do. That like cryptocurrency is the future, and the the moves and space that you can get here. Um, you know, technical analysis works really well in cryptocurrency if it didn't i wouldn't trade it full time uh, and it really does work you know technical analysis is great in this market so i absolutely love it 
I'm not sure how long I've been recording. 45 minutes, so more or less, I think, no? Um, but yeah, that, that was that was Icon. Uh, the other, Obviously, the other coin that I was looking at for you all uh, was this move on BTT. And this is one that I posted about um, a few days ago, I think. And, you know, and at this point, uh, yeah, it must have been a few days ago I posted about this. It, you can check back on my Twitter when I posted, but it was around this stage on the 6th of February. OK, so on the 6th, of, around this sort of time, I posted this chart out. Uh, and it was not more or less the 6th of February. And what I said here is I'm waiting for this to come down to the 618 region, okay? Because for me, um, people were really bullish still at this stage. And I saw people saying to me, no, you need to be buying on the 0.5 because there's support here. Um, but, you know, I, I never get influenced by what anybody else says. And I stick to my plan every single time. I'm never influenced by other people's what they say. And this is why I follow very little people on Twitter. OK, so I follow like 20 people, but I don't li listen to anything that's, you know, I just follow them because they're more more. They're just friends. But, you know, I don't listen to anything that comes onto my timeline. I, I never, ever influenced by what anybody else thinks. Um, and that's why I try and follow least amount of people as possible, because for me, it's just all noise. I follow my own technical analysis and, and that's it. But um you know, when I see like this, for example, you know, I just see, OK, fair enough. This is what this guy's thinking. I don't actually follow this person. But, I, you know, when I see charts come up like this, you know, I'm not following anything that anybody else says. I just follow my own technical analysis. And when people are saying buy the, buy the 0 0.5, like for me, like, no, I'm, I'm waiting for my targets to be here. And for me, it was from the 618 down to the 6786. So in this region is where I was comfortable, you know, placing buys, OK, laddering those buys. Uh, from starting at the 618 coming down to this 786 okay obviously at the 786 here you do have you know really strong support to be honest like this i mean look at that support on the 786 uh, there's no guarantee that it comes down this low but when you're laddering into a position starting at the 618 it lowers your risk because of how you can play those risk to reward ratio like setups and um, so i ladder into positions and not always they get all filled like for instance here i've had one on the 618 field but you know it hasn't come down to any you know lower targets um, and sometimes that happens, but you know, I, I always ladder in and I'm, I'm comfortable missing out sometimes on moves. If, if this was to just to you know suddenly go to the moon, um, then I'd obviously miss out on quite a big of my field positions. But I would add on a breakout, I would add on a breakout, but um, you know, that's just for me personally. For so from the 618 down to the 786, still remains the target. I can see this, you know, has the potential of coming down to this 786 region, okay. And if you look at this from an ABC officially, you can see from the top of one to the bottom of or from the, the top of A to the bottom of A to the top of B here. This target for the ABC, obviously in a zigzag from a five, three, five coming down, you know, that target sits in the middle of the six one eight and the three one two as well, depending on where you take this B from. Uh, either here, it obviously moves it a little bit lower or here. But around this region is the target for, for an ABC zigzag. So there's you know, in terms of Elliott wave counts, there's of a zigzag there's still room for it is to come down. Okay. Uh, so I'm not yeah, I don't need to FOMO into any positions here either. I'm just, you know, I have a setup and then I wait for the setup to be filled. And if the setup, you know, never be filled, then you know it's just a, a move on to another trade. Um, so yeah, <laughs> um, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover actually in this video. Um, yeah, that was a, a bit of a, uh, wild one tonight. Uh, there was just, yeah, but yeah, I think that's everything that I needed to cover though. Um, what's happening here on V, you know, V chain very much moving sideways. Uh, obviously, yeah, we've covered like, yeah, that's everything. Obviously we I can go through Ethereum quickly. I'm going to clear up the Ethereum chart. Um, so just looking at Ethereum on a, on a sort of a longer term, you know, play of where, where Ethereum's going here, obviously Ethereum like was again, like quite any, you know, this is one where I've just been sculpting. Okay. So I was just sculpting Ethereum after I got stopped out of my initial short, but you know, the re, you know, again, where like moves stop out, like nothing's ever random. Um, and so from Ethereum here, taking our fib levels from that swing high down to that swing low, I mean, th this is like not random for me at all that, you know, you, you stop at a 382. I mean, how much more perfect can you get? Um, like the 382 combining it with those resistances, and if we move up to the daily and we move on our exponential moving averages, then, you know, again, you know, we had a lot of confluent reasons to be looking here at shorts then, no? Uh, oh, that's this. That's the sound of something happening. Uh, donated £10. Oh, thank you so much, Paul. <laughs> Honestly, my friend, thank you so much. I hope you like this gift that happens when someone donates. It's like, Ch -ch -ch, and it has Leonardo, do, you know, throwing around his bitcoins. <laughs> I thought that was brilliant anyway. 
Oh, the 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 picture's so small. I, oh, I need to edit that. But um, yeah, like it, it has a picture of Leonardo. You can hardly see it. It's so small. But yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for that, Paul. Uh, means a lot. Um, really does. Um, thank you for the help this week. Got to go manage a few trades. Yeah, no worries at all. And I'm glad I was able to help you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, but yeah, now what we see on here on uh, like Ethereum, obviously this got, you know, topped out at the 382 where there was obviously a really high resistance. OK, so there was really big resistance at this um, sort of level. OK, where you see, you know, support, support, resistance, resistance. You see the 55 EMA, the top Bollinger Band and the 382. You will know that the 382 is a level that I 100% of the time always short. OK, and even if you lose 50% of those trades, then the ones that you win are big winners. <laughs> and the ones that you lose, you lose a small percentage. Um, so this is a level that I personally will short every single time. Um, so I love shorting this position, but you know, that's another trade that's, you know, I obviously got stopped out originally here and I, I got stopped out of this at around $112. I got stopped out of this, this original trade. And then when I got stopped out of here, I entered into scope mode <laughs> and I was scoping this uh, back up. And then obviously when I knew that we, you know, I have on a bit of paper where all my levels are and I knew that we were sitting at $123 of the, the, the 382 and this is a level that I'm then looking for more shorts. Okay. And obviously from here, we've obviously been rejected from that 382 and now we've seen about, you know, a 3% move down. Um, but that's nice. Yeah, thank you, Paul. <laughs> Paul is the man. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's that's what we saw here. Um, and again, this is like really trading is not doesn't have to be hard. You just have to be um, controlled, patient, letting setups come to you um, and just taking it one step at a time. Um, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I love trade. You all know I love trading. It's my passion and I've got such a big, you know, love for trading and technical analysis. And I really want to help people learn technical analysis. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to do anything weird. I'm just trying to like help people out with technical analysis. And, you know, um, some people like trying to, you know, flame me and give me hate and things like this. Um, like what I do is just helping, trying to help people out. I don't see why you can try it. You know, uh, I don't know. It's, it's weird why you get trolls of when all I'm doing is trying to help people. But, um, yeah, I try, uh, yeah, I try and just ignore the trolls cause they are just that. But, um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with this anyway, but, you know, this is just technical analysis, you know, you know absolutely playing out lovely again, <clears throat> where we see, you know, the 382 coming up here from that swing high to that swing low, taking those FIB levels, hitting the 382, getting rejected. Um, and where we bounce from again, although not so much technical analysis, but you just know that this is a psychological number, $100 is a psychological number there are going to be buys placed at this hundred dollar level it's a level um that's either going to hold or it's going to get smashed through it's, it's not generally going to be something in the middle where it's going to move sideways but um you know a hundred dollars is obviously gonna is, is a psychological number that traders are drawn to um so yeah that's that's like what you would be thinking here like one hundred dollars that is like a really uh, psychological number that a lot of people are probably going to be placing buys on. I'm not saying that the the, the uh, retail trailer traders pump this up because you know retail traders buying a hundred dollars wouldn't cause this pump. They wouldn't, you know, it just wouldn't happen. But the, obviously, there's there's a, there was a trader in here somewhere that's you know saw this as an opportunity of accumulation. They've accumulated that that hundred dollars, you know, more or less, you know, round number. And then we've obviously seen a pump the following, you know, the following week and. You know, again, that's just you know, just crazy. Um, yeah, I know. I, I really shouldn't let any trolls affect me, and I I I am generally quite good at just ignoring trolls um, and just like not, not responding. If you know, I try and like not. Res well, I, I'm generally quite lucky that I don't really have any trolls um, too much. You know, you ha occasionally get them. Uh, the worst ones for me. The, the worst. Not so much trolls, but people that think they're superior. Um, are the people that come onto my posts occasionally and start giving me or trying to teach me Elliott Waves. I find it really condescending um, when I have somebody comment on my post like I don't know how to use Elliott Waves. Um, I see that, you know, this is not, you know, this happens occasionally. Well, I have some guy on Twitter that's called himself 
the Elliott Wave trader or something like this. Um, and he'll, you know, people will try and comment on my posts like, you're using Elliott Wave incorrectly or, or something along those lines. Like they're trying to like force, say that I've had a mistake in my in my Elliott Waves. You know, I've probably been, one, I've probably been trading longer than them and, and I do not make a mistake on my Elliott Wave count. Just because it's not from a rule book, um, they try and say that I've made a mistake on my Elliott Wave count. And this is one thing that I find one really patronizing and condescending. Um, I've probably been trading longer than them. I, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I don't make a mistake when I'm trying. Uh, you know, well, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Maybe I occasionally will make a mistake. But when I post it, you know, it's very rare for me to make a mistake. And when they try and highlight things that I've made wrong, um, for me, that wasn't wrong from the way that I use Elliott Waves. That's that's right. And just because it doesn't meet something in a trade book, I occasionally get Elliott Wave trolls that try and um, uh, criticize my posts. But I just find it uh, really funny. Uh, I don't ever reply to them. I d don't give them the time of day. Um, but they, they amuse me. It amuses me and makes me laugh, if anything. Um, so I find it quite funny. But <laughs> those are probably my favourite, the, 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 the Elliot Wave fanatics that try and come on my post thinking that they're better than me or something. I don't know. Um, I find it amusing. <laughs> but yeah, generally, I tr do not respond to trolls um, because it's not worth your negative emotions. As as somebody that strives to be successful, um, you don't want to give any time to negative emotions. Um, this is just like speaking in general, general life, I guess. But I am, you know, I surround myself in a positive environment. OK, so if you want to succeed and you want to move forwards in life, you, you, it, your environment is so important. And if you surround yourself with negative emotions or a negative environment that, you know, everyone around you is negative, then that negativity is going to influence you. And you are if you keep surrounding yourself with negativity, then you will find yourself becoming negative. OK, it's just going to happen, in my opinion. And this is why you have to surround yourself with positive energy, with others that are willing to help and that is going to influence you greatly although you might not think about it consciously subconsciously it's going to help you so much and this isn't me trying to sell myself as a, as a mentor but like just surrounding yourself even having a mentor to speak to just in general and you know having that positivity of somebody that knows what they're talking about and somebody that can lead you in the right direction is you know it's something that you know although I, I would say it's something money can't buy but money can buy a mentor but you know what I mean like it's something that you are needed if you want to be successful you have to surround yourself with that energy and you know the people that are one just like-minded individuals and also want the same thing and secondly know what they're talking about um, you know, I'm actually looking to get some mentorship for me and my own personal life with my business um, because I am trying to now like start up, you know, start up some sort of, uh, you know, brand that I am proud of, that this can be like a legacy. I want to like become some like I want to basically what I'm trying to aim with this is, you know, be the sort of, uh, you know, that people can come to me as and I'm some like like a, a a teacher of technical analysis and for me that is like a legacy that I could be really proud of and, and it's not for the monetary gains I'm not in it for the monetary value uh, although yes the, the you know there's a small charge for my services and um, for me it's not f for the monetary value or for that it's just you know you know nothing's going to be free in life <laughs> uh, that's important to realize nothing's free in life uh, although yes my youtube this is this is free you know within context you know a paid for service like mentorship is not going to be free but you know I, I want to create like a service that i'm really proud of that i can like say to my kids like yeah i was you know i helped change the lives of hundreds of people through teaching them technical analysis technical analysis is something that can honestly change your life i'm a big it's a big fan of saying that technical analysis will change your life. If you study hard, learn technical analysis and move forwards with it, you honestly will. Uh, it honestly can change your life. And that's, you know, no word of a lie. It, it, it's great. It's, it's just so brilliant how it can do that. Um, and that's just because it can give you the financial freedom uh, through trading. Trading is a platform that you can honestly get some really good gains um, and it can change your life financially. It's it's brilliant. Uh, and, and for me to have that impact uh, or being able to have the skills to help people via technical teaching and technical analysis for me personally is better than, you know, a monetary gain to know I have in influenced and helped somebody like change their life um for me is like really impactful and you know i've received messages like that of people saying like daniel you've actually like really positively affected my life in a good way um for me that's that's 
money cannot buy that and that that feeling that i have of knowing that i've helped someone is better than a monetary um someone giving me money like i'd prefer to positively have that you know wow that feeling than given like a you know a hundred grand for example that that's i'd prefer that you know knowing that but again um getting a little bit off track there but you know for me it's brilliant and that's what i'm like trying to do here and and that's what i'm getting the mentor for of like helping me decide where to move next and where someone i can refer to and these are not cheap mentors i'm paying but um you know it's good to have a mentor and just you know surround yourself and, and know where to move next um so yeah i'm excited about that anyway um yeah i think that's everything that i wanted to cover here i'm just gonna look look through the comments <laughs> Yeah, like I'm really, really passionate about, you know, I, I'm such a goal driven person. I always have a goal and I'm always working towards somewhere, something else. Um, there's always something to improve and there's always something where, where to go next. You should never be at a point in your life where you're just moving sideways. Um, or I don't think it's helpful, you know, it's not that, you know, you always want to be moving forwards and moving on to something else. Uh, and maybe I take on a few too many things. Obviously, I've got so many different things lined up. I'm doing so many things. <laughs> um and sometimes it is a bit too much, um, to be honest. But I, you know, it's because I'm just so driven. I'm so motivated, to be honest. I'm really motivated to, you know, move on and, and do good things and, and, you know, move forwards with my life. Um, maybe I do sometimes take too much on. Um, but for me, it's it's worth it um, for, the you know, that 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 potential that we can you know always be striving for something else if you didn't know what you know i do this full time as well and i'm also in a uni course um so i do a uni course in spanish and english currently um so i do my uni course and this uni course is some it's just a uni course from home so I, it's called open university and you basically do uni in your spare time you do get an official degree and it's something that i'm never going to stop so once i've finished my spanish and english uni degree i'm going to do another degree and then once i finish that i'll do another degree and another degree and I'll, I'll probably end life with like a lot of degrees but for me it's just something to keep one to keep my brain active I'm, i always want to be expanding my knowledge and learning I, i'm a big big fan of learning new things um, so yeah, once I finish this degree, which I have another one and a half years of this degree, but once I finish this degree, I want to do a finance degree so then I can actually officially do financial advice. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, so I want to do a finance degree after I've finished my uh, language degree. And then once I've finished my finance degree, you know, I'll move on to another one and, and start studying something else at the moment. I don't know, but that's, that would obviously be like eight years into the future. But, um, you know, I'm always somebody that wants to keep learning. And once I've, you know, I'm doing a degree now and I'll be doing a degree in 10 years time. Um, that's what I mean. I'm taking on a lot of stuff and I've also obviously got engaged recently. So, you know, I'm trying to plan the wedding. I want to get this workshop sorted. I'm still really passionate about doing this workshop. Um, so, um, yeah, that workshop was planned for in Bali. Um, but I'm debating whether to do one in England first. Um, I'm kind of thinking about this currently, whether I start off in England or on a, like a weekend workshop um, before I go straight to Bali for a week workshop. I'm undecided right now. Um, it's just that this year is obviously really busy for me with having to like plan a wedding <laughs> and things. Um, I don't want to take on too much stuff. Um, and a week away in Bali for a workshop. I'm not sure at the moment wh whether hundred percent I'm going to be doing it in Bali or I want to do a workshop in some place, be it England or Bali. I'm, uh, obviously I'm very fortunate and feel very, uh, blessed to be offered that, uh, villa in Bali. Obviously I'm, I'm very grateful for that offer. Um, you know, an amazing location. Absolutely. And I'm very, you know, grateful for that but i'm just debating for me whether it's the right thing to be doing at the moment um i i want to do one but it, it might just be in london uh the first obviously my first ever one um if i i start off in in england and then move on from there um but yeah that that's that, that's why i just wanted to yeah say about that workshop because I've, it is still like an ongoing conversation the the time zones are making it a bit hard the conversation is very delayed because obviously we have a big time zone difference um but yeah, I, I'm still definitely up for doing that. It's just I need to think first where I want to do this, uh, be it England or, or Bali in my first location for the workshop. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, thank you, everybody. Honestly, your 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 comments, you know, you all know your, your comments make me very happy. And, you know, to see nice comments like this, you know, for me is I'm honestly so grateful. And, you know, a big thank you from the bottom of my heart for for all the support that you give me. Um, I had a comment the other day from somebody saying like, wow, like you've blown up. And like when I 
this is again if, if you're after technical analysis i'm probably going to have finished my technical analysis for tonight um and i'm just going to be rambling on about a few things now um, so if, if you were here for the technical analysis, thank you for joining me. I hope I've cleared up and helped you, you know, manage like what you're looking at here on trading um, across, you know, across all the altcoins that we've been flipping through tonight. Um, I hope that, you know, you've, you've been able to, you know, take something from this uh, educationally and I hope it helped you. Um, obviously, so if you are only after technical analysis, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Uh, and if you'd like to hear me ramble on, then you can uh, stay for another five, ten minutes. <laughs> Um, so with that said, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, just going through the comments, you know, that's what I wanted to say, like, thank you honestly so much. And obviously I know I have a lot of, you know, supporters from different parts of the world, which for me is amazing. Honestly, I want to do some sort of trip where I come around and just meet people like a different, different, be it, you class yourself as a student or a fan or a supporter, um, just a avid, you know, like-minded individual in technical analysis. Um, I do want to do some sort of tour, etc., where I come around and just meet and say hello to people. And that could be in the, the, the form of a, um, uh, a workshop tour where I do a, a, a work my workshops obviously teaching technical analysis uh, which I'm very passionate about teaching um, but teaching this technical analysis in different countries so you know going around England going around the United States of America going around Europe uh, shout out to Amsterdam <laughs> um, <laughs> Detroit <laughs> yeah but that's something that I'd be uh, you know interested in and then the people that you know for instance couldn't afford the workshop because again that I wouldn't do a workshop for free for me it would would not be viable to do a free workshop or however much I'd love to do a free workshop uh, wouldn't be viable um yeah so there would be, obviously with a workshop there's going to be a monetary cost involved but for the people that couldn't afford the workshop um you know I'd be happy to like hang out with people and just you know go for a drink and buy people drinks um you know, I'm, I'm very generous when I spend, you know, money. So I'd be, you know, happy to like meet up with people when I do these tours and just say hello and, you know, hang out with, you know, some people. I'm totally a person that's very unjudgmental and I'm also very trusting. I, I you know, I love everybody. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's, you know, for me, that would be great to be able to go and come around and do some, do a tour of, um, you know, these different countries uh, for mainly for the workshops. But then for the people that couldn't afford, afford the workshops, just like hang out, go for a meal or go for a drink. I think that would be lovely and cool. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what I wanted, to, when would I start the live trading series? This live trading series, I was planning to start at the beginning of February. I'll be honest. Um, I was going to start a live trading series at the beginning of Feb. Um, but I just do not have the time right now. I, I don't have the time to be sat down uh, doing a, you know, uh, an, you know, this, this, I was planning to do like a day of trading, like eight hours, just staying on my computer, doing like sculpt trades throughout the day. Um, but currently I just really do not have the time. How, however much I wish there were more, more hours in the day but as it stands the yeah I, I will do the live sculpting sessions at some point but currently there is kind of just on hold <laughs> until I can like manage to get some more time I, I honestly wish I had more time in the day but yeah my schedules right now is for me to be able to do this live stream today obviously I've been already going on for an hour um, and I always try and give myself a you know a target not to run over and I've, I've kind of run over what I was originally planning here but um, it's because I enjoy it I enjoy just hanging out and speaking with you all to be honest but um, yeah the, the live the, I'm going to sneeze I feel like I'm going to sneeze um well, it's gone. <laughs> um, yeah the, the, I was planning to do obviously this like it's something that I talked about you know a while ago and then I was planning to do this on the start of February um but yeah it's, it's kind of just yeah running out you just don't have the time in the day at the moment to sit down for eight hours and do and run through these live streams um you know it's just not viable for me to do that as at this current point maybe in a maybe uh the possibility of me starting it next I would imagine well when kind of when things slow down a little bit for me and become less busy at the moment, I just have too many things. Um, I'm also trying to do the website. I'm still working really hard on the website with the web developer, and I don't think it's going to be too much longer. Um, but I want to—I don't want to release a half-finished product. I want to make sure it's re ready before I release it. So we are still working on that really, really hard. Um, and that's another thing that I've got going on. But for me, the website, I want to make sure it's perfect or the most perfect I can do. I'm not a web guy at all, but um, for me, I want to make sure it's like good before it's released um so yeah doing that as well but you know just in general it is obviously not i don't discuss my whole life with people but i've got a lot of things going on personally um you know that 
you know, for, obviously, you know, really, I'm just really, really, really busy. And, you know, I, I wish I had the time to go through more things. But um, currently life is very busy. And, and that's not a bad thing. You know, I'm, I'm grateful that how busy it is, because it's obviously great. Um, but yeah, I just don't have the time for it at the moment. But yeah, what happened to gaming streams? Yeah, I was going to do like a gaming stream, I could still do it. Um, but again, it's just the time. Um, I was debating doing a gaming stream over on Twitch for, you know, looking at um, uh, looking at da -da 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 -da, playing League of Legends and things like that. But um, yeah, there's still the possibility. And I'm going to post my Twitch over here on YouTube. And then if you want to see uh, gaming streams, then come and follow that Twitch link um, where I'll be, you know, just chatting and playing some games from now, now and again. I'm not sure how often that will happen, but uh, it's something I'm looking at. Um, and lastly, uh, I, this is what I wanted to cover. Like somebody asked me the other day of like, wow, what's happened? Like you've blown up. Um, and for me, this is really crazy. Like, I think his question was like, did you imagine this to happen? Like, did you imagine yourself, you know, obviously for me, this is really crazy. Like how many, I think I'm on like 4,000. Okay. So about, um, oh, I hate the new Twitter. Okay. Yeah. So five, four, say five, 4,000 followers. Like for me. That is absolutely crazy. Uh, really, really, really crazy that I have 4,000 followers. That is, for me is like, when I was asked this question the other day, like, did you imagine this? Like, no, <laughs> I did never imagine getting this amount of like following, like I never ever thought it would happen. When I first started off, um, you know, I was obviously started off just making YouTube videos. Um, <laughs> and there was the sneeze. I told you all that it was coming. What well, didn't I? <laughs> I, I knew I felt that. I knew I felt a sneeze. Oh, but there we go. <laughs> now that's out of the way. I can continue. I, I knew it was going to happen. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what I was going to say is, um, uh, yeah, I never ever imagined to get this much of a following. Like for me, this is like really crazy. When I first started off, I just imagined myself like staying with like 10 followers or something. Uh, you know, why would anybody take any notice of what I was saying? I, I don't know. I never thought that it would come to like this big. And for me, this is like really, really crazy. And like nothing that I ever imagined when I first started out, I was, it was not really for me, the amount of followers that I got. I'm not in it for like, uh, you know, social media for me is just a platform to help people. It's, it, you know, I, I don't really care whether I have five followers or 5,000 followers. Yeah. You know, obviously the, this is what I mean, like, like the more that I have is obviously beneficial because, you know, I have a bigger reach and I can help more people. But when I started out, it wasn't for any sort of following numbers. Like, for me, it's kind of irrelevant, the number. But um, as long as I can help people out, then that's what I started this for. Um, obviously, my first ever YouTube video, I, I kind of touched on it that I started out on YouTube because I had saw so many bad traders on Twitter and I don't like to be mean but there were there were so many bad accounts on the uh, cryptocurrency trading space um, and I just saw such bad advice being given out that I started up the YouTube channel to actually um, give good advice in in terms of what people should be looking at um, and I touched on hinted on like this when I first on my first ever video where I said um, you know I was talking about you know the bad quality of traders that were in the space and you know everybody's looking bullish when we're in a descending triangle etc etc um, but yeah for me that's why I first started off and it was just you know I never expected to get a big following um, but it was just to try and help out as much people as I could um, you know actually giving good trading advice um, and you know from the feedback that I've received I've helped out a, a, a lot of people more than I ever imagined I would be able to help from just from that reach that I've got now of you know thousands of people that I have the possibility of helping for me is just like wow and I sometimes just sit you know lay in bed at night and just think like wow I'm really really fortunate to be able to help so many people um it's really really like I feel really fortunate to have this reach that I have of, and the amount of people that I can help it's it's really brilliant um and I feel very blessed very 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 lucky um well, I guess nothing in life is luck, you know, I, although I feel lucky, I want to say something that, you know, nothing happens in life for a lucky reason. You work hard. Um, and, and this is something that I hinted on the other day when I, I'm going to refer to this post because it was, you know, obviously, you know, for me, it had quite a lot of, you know, likes when I posted on this, um, this one here where I was saying like grind in your twenties, build in your thirties, chill in your forties. Motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. If you want to be a millionaire, act like one, study like one and work like one. And what I mean by this is 
when I refer, refer to myself as it was luck, I actually have put in a lot of work to where I get now. Like nothing happens just for luck. If you want something in life, you really have to work hard for it. And nothing is handed to you on a silver platter, unfortunately. Uh, and the same goes for learning technical analysis. You have to work hard for it. Um, nobody can just hand something to you on a plate and you can expect something for free. Um, you are going to have to work and pay for things if you want them, basically. And this was just like trying to give you motivation to, you know, get up and actually work and study hard. Um, and for me, technical analysis is the best thing you can study because it's going to change your life. It's going to change your life and you are going to become a millionaire. That's no word of a lie. Um, obviously, people refer to, you know, people is a kind of a taboo subject. Now, T talking about money is a little bit taboo in the sense that... Um, if you talk about money, then you're either considered a show off or you're considered um, an asshole. Like, so why, why is this guy trying to show off about money? And I'm not like that. I'm not trying to show off about money. But if you can use this as motivation that, you know, literally you can become a millionaire through technical analysis. But if you put in that hard work, obviously you need the starting capital. But if you then put in that hard work and are very good with your risk and reward management over the years, and this isn't a get rich, get quick scheme. But if you put in that consistent work every single day, then you will see that money adding up and adding up and adding up and adding up. But that's not going to come. That's not going to happen unless you work hard. OK, you, you know. Um, if you like look at me, like I started off with very little, but I worked so hard. I'm such a hard worker and I will always be a hard worker. Um, and for me, like technical analysis now in itself, like when I refer to technical analysis, this for me isn't work. Although it's like my in quote job. Um, for me, it's a hobby. I, I enjoy it so much. It's, it's not a job for me. Uh, I absolutely love charting and doing technical analysis and teaching. For me, it's it's not a job at all. Um, but, you know, it, you, basically study like one. You know, I studied so hard. I put in so many hours reading technical analysis books, watching YouTube videos, just going through the charts and going over setups. I would spend hours and hours and hours a day going through this because I worked out what I wanted. You know, I wanted to be a technical analysis guy. I wanted to do charting. I wanted to be a trader I had that goal I knew what I wanted and I'm very motivated that when I want something I will work hard for it um failure for me is is a kind of a, a, a cliche <laughs> but failure for me is not an option if I want something I'm gonna work hard for it till I get it and I wanted to be a trader um I wanted to have that money uh <laughs> and I worked very very hard for it and now here we are so please try and use this as motivation please don't try and take this as me being a show-off because I'm not a show-off if you see me walking through the streets, um, you would maybe think I'm homeless <laughs> because I literally, uh, in terms of buying things, I am very minimalistic and I, I generally do not care what people think of me. Um, you know, people could think I'm homeless if they saw me <laughs> uh, occasionally. Uh, because yeah I, I i have no interest in in pleasing other people uh life is is for yourself not to make somebody else happy or to show off for somebody else so don't take any of this as showing off posts about being a millionaire and it's just kind of use this for motivation and, and see what i've done and you can achieve the same it's absolutely possible um yeah and i think that's how i'm going to end the stream just hopefully hopefully some of you can use that as motivation and you know really study hard and honestly cryptocurrency is the time now to be studying hard if you're studying hard now you're ready for this next bull run when it comes okay you'll be ready for this next bull run because it is coming it is coming the next bull run will come and you will know when that comes where your sales are where your re-entries are and how to play that market and how to kill that market if you are studying hard and ready for that when it comes that next bull run is going to turn you into a millionaire now, without a doubt it will turn you or not necessarily a millionaire it will turn you very uh, wealthy um, because you're gonna you're gonna kill this market with me. You are gonna kill this market. I'm ready for it. Uh, I'm ready for you know. I don't think it's happening now, but when it comes around, when that bull run happens, I'll be ready. I'll be on the pedal. Um, you know, until then, you know, I still see great potential, obviously, to the downside. Um, as a, as a trader, I don't care whether the market goes up. Uh, this this could go to twenty grand tomorrow. I wouldn't mind. It could go to you know two grand tomorrow, and I wouldn't mind. For me, it has you know no no bearing on what's happening on the charts I, I don't care if it goes up or down for me there's money to be made either way um but yeah be ready <laughs> be ready when it comes and just make sure you study study hard
Uh, yeah, so I think that's going to wrap it up. Please, everybody, uh, if you've enjoyed tonight's video, give me a thumbs up. Honestly, the, the thumbs up, uh, although you might not realize it, um, that it is really beneficial uh, because, you know, it helps, you know, other people see the video uh, and it just gives me a, a sign to know that you've enjoyed. Um, so, you know, be all, by, by all means, don't, don't bother. But I, I would appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up uh, and, yeah, share it with your friends, etc., etc. You know, the, the general what happens on... Uh, <laughs> on the end of videos give it a thumbs up give it a give it a give it a share um and yeah comment and, and, and yeah i hope you've all enjoyed I'll, I'll stay for a few more minutes to go through the comments um yeah it looks like a very very nice uh comment trading is yeah thank you thank you thank you lots of thank yous basically bless you yeah honestly thank you so much and you know i bless you all too thank honestly it's 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 very heartwarming for me and i feel so fortunate um yeah, I'm very, very, very blessed. Um, that's an interesting comment. Trading is a lonely business. Um, trading, I guess, can be a bit lonely. Well, I guess, yeah, I've never thought of it like this, but I guess trading can be lonely in that you're sat at your computer for all day just trading. Um, but that's why I'm fortunate about having this Discord group. Uh, honestly, the Discord group that I have here is is full of so many uh, like-minded, friendly individuals. Like everybody on this Discord is so friendly. You you can never feel alone uh, when you have you know people like this on on your side. Uh, this is very very friendly community everybody is really supportive um, and if you had any problems I'm sure you could well for me personally you could come along and say you know I've got a problem and I, I would personally you know be willing to hear you out um, but you know if, if I'm not available then you know you can come over here and just um, yeah look, look, you know come and speak to people in here and I'm sure you'll get support um, and not just support but you know obviously we're, we're all passionate about you know technical analysis and doing charts um, and there's a lot of you know fellow good charters here on, on here so you can learn here and just hang out here so although trading is a, a lonely in terms of you're at your computer all day there's always somebody to speak to and interact to uh, over in this discord and I'm not the, I, I would say now I'm not the most active <laughs> member of this Discord channel, although I am the, the, the sort of owner, I guess, of the Discord. I'm not the most active <laughs> in here. Um, like today, for instance, uh, and this is why I'm not active when I when something happens. Like for me, when this move is happening, I don't have time to post on Twitter or post on Discord like what I'm doing in the time. Uh, I Obviously, trading is my main source of income, so I, I can't, can't be managing my trades and simultaneously posting on Twitter and posting on Discord all at the same time. Um, so that's why I am sometimes inactive because I'm busy in my own trades. Um, and that's why it helps to learn your own technical analysis because I'm not going to have time to be managing really hardcore scalping and talking in discord at the same time. For me, it's not possible. Uh, I have to be focused on one thing. Um, Although it, it, and this is like where it goes with the live streams as well. Like, it's hard for me to be speaking in live streams and also really concentrating on a chart and trading that chart. And the same goes for like when I'm actually full on scalping mode, I can't be coming into Discord and having conversations <laughs> or uh, on Twitter posting pictures when I'm, you know, concentrating on a really big trade on a really big trade. And you know, when you're managing really big sums of money, um, you don't want to be distracted and take unnecessary losses. And um, it would be uh, a bad situation uh yeah for me anyway I, i'd like to um yeah try try and you know minimize those distractions i hope you appreciate that as well um but i obviously try and come back to here and, and discord and post whenever i can but occasionally if i'm really busy on a trade then i yeah i don't have the time to post <laughs> um but yeah hope you've all enjoyed this video and uh, yeah i'm gonna wrap it up now um and yeah i hope you've all enjoyed Obviously, yeah, this was uh, obviously the, the stock market today started really red. Um, EA, EA and uh, Activision saw two really big dumps, OK, a few days ago and they've recovered so hard. Um, you know, th there's opportunities here in the stock market. I've been training the stock market as well uh, today. I've Today's been a crazy day where I've been trading a bit of everything. Um, but yeah, th this is actually recovered. If we look here on a one hour, you know, it's recovered quite well. Obviously, we started, you know, with a drop down, obviously started in the drop down. And then we had a drop for the first few hours. And then we've recovered very nicely, to be honest. We've recovered very nicely on the stock market. Well, this is on the S&P, but, you know, across, you know, different, you know, different exchanges. They've all kind of recovered very nicely. EA, what a cr crazy move that was. I was not expecting this big move up today. Obviously, breaking through that resistance. I, I, I shorted this region here and that was a very nice drop that happened. 
And this was off of a trend line, okay? So the reason I entered this short on EA was first we had the 236, and second we had this trend line again. And you see this was a trend line, uh, which was really valid again. So you had the 236 acting as resistance Fibonacci, and you also had one, two, three, four touches of a trend line, five touches of a trend line, you know, rejection. And that, you know, final touch here, I wasn't expecting such a big drop if I'm honest. My target was down here at 87, but, you know, we obviously dropped down very big percentage. 15% after dropping down such a big percentage becoming so oversold we obviously have now just seen a big recovery and that recovery has blown straight through that resistance trend line so um yeah th this though for instance could come down and test this as support and move on that's why I keep it but you know that could come down and see something like this but yeah EA crazy move um but yeah stock market's very active you know always enjoyable to trade that and yes yeah, likewise on cryptocurrency um, so yeah, thank you everybody for watching. I'm going to be wrapping up this live stream today and I will catch you all uh, next time. Thank you so much for watching me and I will uh, catch you all soon. Again, I, I just want to really say a really, 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 really big thank you to you all. You all make me very happy. Um, so yeah, just know that and it makes it gives me pleasure to help you all out. So <laughs> thank you for that. And uh, yeah, cheers for watching. Cheers, everybody. Catch you all soon.